So I'm Wilfred Patrick. I'm a partner in the operational real estate team at Gerald Eve, and I'm also head of hotels and extended stay at Gerald Eve. So it's been fantastic today, actually, because this is one of the first operational real estate conferences that actually deals with all of operational real estate and not just hotels. And as we now look to move forward, we want to be more collaborative with other sectors and learn from each other today. So today's been a very good example of that. Ironically, the hotel sector, for example, was started off companies like Whitbread, which owned the asset, they owned the brand, and so they owned everything. Um, and that was called basically a Notco and Propco all merged into one. What companies then went to do was go asset light and they basically tried to sell off all of their assets or merge them away from into other vehicles. So for example, the core hotels took all of their properties and put them into a company called Core Invest, which is a separate company, and then kept the Opco as, as a separate. So the Propco was in Core Invest and the Opco um, was a core main business. So what you're seeing now is actually people re-questioning that again as what is actually the best operational model. Um, you have people like Brookfield who own um, Eden, and they have looked at that model and actually that model's been going very well. So today's conference, we've been looking at what is the best operational model and actually it's all comes down to alignment of interest and that's been one of the key buzzwords that's come out of today. The, the market certainly has become more segmented. I mean, the advice that we give to some of, so I give an example, so in an average year, we advise about 22 billion pounds worth of hotel or extended say assets. And if you look at the advice that we give to, let's say the budget end of the market versus the luxury end of the market, it is two, two different, very t different types of advice. And so therefore we are seeing more segmentation in terms of operational structures. Um, so the budget end of the market is still very, and, and also for apart hotels and uh, service departments, it's still quite least orientated. Um, whereas if you're looking at the five star end luxury, so for example, we advise on the new Peninsula Hotel and the old war office and, and so on. And that is still, you know, looking at this owner operator structure. So I think it comes down to each of the assets and you have to look at each one individually. So there's no one set rule that applies throughout the whole of the, t the hotel industry. It does break down into the different sectors. If one looks at how the hotel market performed during COVID, I mean, I spent quite a lot of hours working late at night with a lot of clients who were having major problems. But actually, if you look at the, how the hotel market has, has come through, that we are very different to other sectors. We are a market that pre-COVID was growing, demand's growing, people want to travel more. And, and actually, our market was very, very strong pre-COVID. What, so what that meant is during COVID and the recovery, if you look where the KPIs are today for hotels in terms of top line revenue and, and so on, we are much better than we ever thought we would be. Obviously, there's headwinds in terms of costs, but that's affecting everybody and across the sector. However, the hotel world is a very dynamic world. We are able to change and evolve. So I can give you an example. For a five-star hotel, previously, if you went to the five-star hotel, the doorman would never check you in. His job was a doorman. He didn't do any other functions. During COVID, that doorman was trained out of necessity to check people in. So nowadays, on a five-star hotel, the doorman can now check you in. So that means during peak times, we don't need that extra receptionist. Um, so therefore, that's an example of how hotels are able to evolve and also technology is helping us as well. In terms of the next 12 months, I mean, my concern is obviously debt is a major problem um, and the cost of debt is, is, is really quite concerning. You know, if you look at the hotel world, we are performing incredibly well, and yet what's hampering us or holding us back is this level of debt. So I think what we are going to see is, you know, debt is for some people at eight, nine percent. We will see some hotel companies will struggle with that, and there will be some casualties out of that. But I must stress, those casualties are most likely going to be companies which haven't invested in their assets um, or are too highly geared. But this time around, after the GFC, you know, the gearing is much more sensible levels. We, we, we're not seeing the gearing that we saw at the GFC where you know, it's very, very bad and, and there's very little in it. Whereas nowadays, it's um, a lot more stable. So I'm, you know, and operationally wise, I'm very comfortable at the year ahead. I have got concerns just about where that debt level is going to be and how that's going to impact us. Mm -hmm.